What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life and TV. I am Poetry. You are here for another recap and review of American Soul. Sly in the family style, baby. <laughs> That's who was on this episode. This is season two, episode four. Lovely day. It's a lovely day. So, um, this episode, y'all, I watched it last week. And, I don't know, life just... I wish I'd have did it last week because I had to retain more of the episode last week. So, we're going to try to get right on into it. We start off with uh, Don on the phone. He's uh, handling business, trying to get everything together for his new guest. Okay? He has to cancel another guest in order to make this guest on the show happen. I'm like, they got Elton John. That was my first thought. They got Elton John. But he finna cancel out the black folks to put Elton on? I guess, you know, everybody kind of tell him what sense it makes for him to get Elton John and how much money it would bring in. So, you know, you gotta move people around who not gonna draw as much attention in order to accommodate Elton John. That's what I was thinking. I was like, okay. So, he was like, alright, they gonna be pissed. We'll talk to them later. I can't talk to them right now. And they, the person on the phone was like, well, who you got to replace them? He said, it's none of their business. So let them know we're going to reschedule them for another date. Okay. So um, he goes out on the parking lot. And you see Don standing there. And he looked like a set of bowling pins. You know, because he's standing at the head. And you got JT and Gerald right there behind him. Then you got another group of three. and another, It's a whole bowling set of bowling pins of people standing there just waiting. I'm like, who the fuck is this? Baby, out come young DC Fly. It's a DC Fly Young. DC Fly Young. DC Fly Young. Lord Jesus. He comes out the woodwork, baby. He comes out of the woodwork. What is going on up here? Look, don't mess up the traffic for me. He stepped out with his whole crew of hippies. You know, young DC got on his tight little shiny outfit. You know, he got on his his platform shoes. And they come out thugging. That's how they're walking. They coming up walking, thugging. Walking in like, well, you better know who in the motherfucking business. Baby, they got a god dog on Yama named Black Sheba. Nobody ever told me that Sly from Sly the Family Stone was this crazy. The pearly... You know, he had a, a reputation for not showing up to shows on time or just not showing up at all. Throwing wild ass parties where the hotel get trashed, the sound stage get trashed. He get trashed. He got this reputation that precedes him. And Don and them out there to let him know, you ain't finna bring this business up into the soul trade. That's not what you finna do. He got that got them with him though. I was cracking up. He came up to me like, what's up, baby? It's cool. I'm glad I got your call. So I was like, oh, okay. So whoever it was got replaced by Sly the Family Stone. They were just the Family Stone at this time. And I'm just telling you, baby, he is high as a kite. I forgot what he said. He found that dime. Damn Yama here. But that Yama been on the bus with them black sheep. Baby, that's what they called it. Her was silky like it uses Afro Sheen. Baby, that Yama's hair was silky. <laughs> and um you know Don basically tell him like we don't want your we don't want no shit things gonna, here gonna go smoothly I got your word on it right and it looked like Sly was ready to pop off and whoop Don ass that's what it looked like so everybody bucking up on both sides but he like everything cool baby everything gravy baby just gravy Sly was cool as a motherfucker <laughs> he was cool as a motherfucker and then that dope that dope you know, got you just wave it out, baby. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> JT, like, what? What was up with this dude? You know, he he owns something. Whatever he's smoking, I might want some. It's like, it does, no, you don't want none of that, bro. He on shrooms. He on acid. He on something else. <laughs> you know, he ain't just high on life. He owns something else. You know. So, uh, they getting ready for for slatter. To, to perform and everything. So this whole episode. I realized. 
he had more performers on this one episode than I've ever seen on the show. Um, he had Sly, and then he had Mary Wells too. Now Mary Wells evidently just left the Supremes. So um, Don want to make sure that she get everything she need. I thought maybe Don was sleeping with her. That's what I thought at first, you know, because he wanted to make sure he accommodated her. And Tess was like, "What you mean?" He said, "Get her what you want." You got to get her talking and everything. I forgot that Don used to interview the people when they came on there. And then the people from the audience used to also ask questions too. I forgot all about that aspect of uh, Soul Train. But of all the questions that they presented to Mary Well, she was like, I can't answer this. I can't talk about this. I can't talk about this. I can't talk about that. And I damn sure can't mention her name. I don't even want to mention her name ever again. You know what I'm saying? She was talking about Diana Ross. You know she was talking about Diana Ross. So Tess trying to tell her, look her, whenever Don asks you something that you ain't comfortable with asking, stir the question. Start talking about him. You know, change to change the story to, to, uh, back to him. And you know, he impressed with that shit. That'll throw his whole game off. You be all right, girl. You be all right. So we're gonna have Sly. And Sly and them open up, baby. They was jamming. They was get down. Oh, they was ah, they was get down. They was get down when they opened up. I never realized how much of, of the Family Stones music that I really was into. Oh my goodness, this was an episode full of music. Yeah, now they was doing the design thing. Um, but yes, yeah, and they, I think that slide we got to see slide perform two songs. You know, he had the rehearsal song, then he had his actual performance song. Okay. So, uh, Sly. It's, it's showtime, right? And um, we can't figure out where Sly is. We in his dressing room. He won't come out. He locked the door. And everybody like, okay, he in there acting fool. We told him we don't want this shit right now. He got to stay on the up and up. And so Tessa, she go in there and try to knock on the door like, hey, you promised get your ass on stage. I ain't got time for this shit today. I ain't got time for it. Don had told Tessa to like uh, watch over Sly and make sure he ain't being ignorant. And she's like, no, I can't do that. I can't watch over him. And look, I already stepped in some Yama shit. You know, these some $100 boots. You, go, oh, you owe me $100 for some new boots. By the time they got through, Don owed her like a thousand dollars for some new boots because she was like raising the price every time she had to deal with slide them. <laughs> this dog gonna yum. So they going around, like I said, they looking for slide in all these different places. Like, where the fuck is he? Where is he? They open up doors. You see band members in there screwing with the dancers, you know, the white boy in there tapping it out. The dancer got escorted her ass up out of there. This is not what we finna do in here. This is not what we finna do up in here. We already got Simone ass trying to talk to all the talent. Now here your ass trying to get to the talent as well. So she was getting it too. She was getting it. So she finally got to the point where she tells Sly. Uh, she found a room that he was in and he, he wouldn't open the door. And he wouldn't answer. He wouldn't say nothing. She was like, all right. So Tess bust the door down. You know, like bust the door open. Like what the hell is going on? Maybe they in there having a whole little prayer circle. They got the, the, the priest or the, the, the preacher, or the, you know, the bishop, whoever, whichever one he was. He was in there. They had him praise and worship. And now Tessa like, oh, what's going on? I don't know. <laughs> I, what, what's really going on? I think I just mixed some I think I just mixed something up. I think I mixed up this part where the dude, the band member was sleeping with the girl. That might have been mixed up, but that's not all the way relevant right now anyway. So... So he like, come on in, baby, come on, join in. And Tessa like, no, no, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm good, you know. I talked to my Lord in the, oh, my own way. That's all right, y'all had it. Y'all, she was shocked, like, oh shit, we thought he was in here getting high, tripping out, and now uh, he in here, you know, talking to the big G. You know what I'm saying? He getting high, but not in the way that we thought he was. He getting spiritually high at this moment. That's the only way he got, he could do it. The only way he could do it. So, um. Oh, I might be mixing all this stuff up, but that's what happened. Some of that happened. So later on, like say, when it's time for Sly to go, oh, I think that was the rehearsal part.
No, it was time for him to perform for real. So it was time for Sly to perform for real. And he up on stage. He uh can't nobody find him or he again won't come out of his room. He said he refusing to play now. Why? Because his violin has ain't showed up. His violin is stuck in traffic on the four or five or the ten. It was one of the two. He was stuck in traffic. So he ain't going on stage without his violinist. Okay, he get up there and uh the violinists come in and test the scene. He bump into him like, hey, where you at? If you don't get your ass in that room with him right now so y'all can get up on stage, you better make it happen. Let's move. Okay. So the violinists rush off to go on there with Sly, right? Then now we got some commotion on the parking lot. The, the violinist is wheeling Sly out in the wheelchair. He looked dead in the motherfucker, right? I can't do the dead because I'm driving. He looked dead in the motherfucker. The guard is like, what's going on? It's, it's, this, this man is dead. I need to call the law. I need to call the peoples. And he was like, ain't nothing wrong with him. He's like, no, he dead. And the violin is like, look, let's just let us through. Let's let us through. But see, Don and then was able to interject. Like, what the fuck is up with, with him? This motherfucker ain't dead, you know? He was like, no, he dead. So the, the security guard is telling him, well, if he dead or if he not, I'm calling the police because something shady is going on her. Something's it's an infraction happening here on his lot. And this ain't Wally or Willie, the, 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 the big white guy that's always there. You know, he, he used to dying and his shenanigans and stuff right now. But this dude is like, look, I'm calling the police. I'm calling the real people. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to mess with me. I'm just a security guard. This ain't worth all my life. You know what I'm saying? So Don, like, tries to pull the violin case out of uh, Sly's lap. Why Sly got the violin? His violin is to have his own violin. It's like a, Sly held on to that mug. He still played dead though, but he held on to that mug. Baby, <laughs> Don got that out of his hands and said, look here, you better sit up, straighten up, and fly right. Or we're going to have some problems, my homie. We're going to have some problems, you know. <laughs> Basically, Don threatened his ass to get back up on stage and you go perform. If y'all didn't realize that the whole case, that was all of Sly's drugs. <laughs> he needed his violinist, who ain't even a violinist, to show the fuck up with the dope. So he can get high before he performed. That's, you know, that's how he get his anointing. So, <laughs> you know, Don was able to get the case away from him. And, um, Sly gets up on stage and uh he gonna go ahead and perform. You know, he did he did another one of our jams, boy. The band freaked out, the band jammed out. And the his his, his saxophone player, oh my gosh, I, I meant to write down her name. His saxophone player just passed away the other day. So rest in peace. She was bad as a mug on that sax. Man, she led the little it is amazing. I, the whole this show it don't become like no fucking omen. The people just pass away and then all of a sudden they appear on the TV show. Like Bonnie Pointer passed away, you know, on the 8th of June. Then she appeared on last episode of the show. And now Sly and the Family Stones saxophone player, she passed away and then she appeared on this episode of the show. I was like, well, damn. You know, I don't know, damn, I don't need nobody else to pass away. <laughs> so, yeah, they, um, he performed, he do his thing, and everything groovy, baby. Everything gravy, you know what I'm saying? The band freaked out. They clown. I was in front of the TV dancing my ass off. Let me tell you, let me tell you. So, when it came to do Mary Wells, they showed a section, the sex, the segment of her where she was just interviewing and talking to Don. And um, she convinced Don to get out and do the Soul Train line. She said that was her biggest dream. She always wanted to go down the Soul Train line. And he was like, all right, go and do it. She's like, no, 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 unless you do it with me. So, of course, Don went to get down there and dance. He had never went down his own Soul Train line before. Tessa, she in the background, egging it on. No, go on, dance, Don. Don't let her go down without you. You know, so now not everybody, all the kids. This is in the middle of a live taping. Everybody's screaming for Don to get down there and get down the Soul Train line. They didn't realize Don got some moves. He had some moves. Boy, him and Mary came down that Soul Train line like, what? You you better work. You better work. I was like, y'all better do that. They showed Don got busy. 
he got busy for the one time. I think he went down the line two or three times. And he didn't just like come down and do the robot and shit like that. Don came and broke it down, baby. He came and broke down that soul train line. I was like, look at on Don Cornelius. That's about the happiest I've ever been about Don Cornelius on this whole show. It's just watching him go down that soul train line. It was love. If y'all seen the movie Five Bloods, uh, the Five Bloods was uh, Spike Lee joined with Dale Rolando in it. If y'all see that movie and they over in Vietnam, they did a soul train line over there, baby. And that's what this reminded me of. They was, boy, they was getting it coming through that soul train line. I was like, you better go ahead, dance, Mary and Don. Dance, Mary and Don. So now we've had uh, Sly and the Family Stone. And then we had Mary Wells. I don't know who the actress was that played Mary Wells. Um, and I don't really know Mary Wells as a person to know what her demeanor was to see if this actress really captured her. If y'all know about that, y'all put it down in the comment section. Um, so now we got, you know, Sly and the Family Stone and everything. Okay, um, and Mary Wells. They were the three, the two performers that came on. Now, in the meantime, we could get to see a little bit more uh, JT and Simone and we've been asking forever and ever what's going on with fucking Kendall, you know, Simone's brother, why we ain't heard nothing about him and I'm like, did they write him off the show? because like I said, I know when the show was not airing, he was the main person on Twitter the actor was the main person on Twitter showing all the backstage stuff, so maybe Kendall was going to pop back up in some kind of way um so Simone is in line and her and Flo getting to it. I don't remember who said what. But basically, Simone said that Flo was a hater. And they got into a disagreement about how that she's a goody two shoes, entitled ass person, and this, that, and other. And they go back and forth about that and about how selfish that Flo is. And Flo, like, I ain't selfish. She said, Oh, you're not. Your brother thinks so. How do I know? Because I talked to him. You haven't. <laughs> that's how I know because you know Simone went off to New York and said fuck the group encore and fuck everybody else she left her man to chase her dreams and everything and didn't look back and think about nobody else and Flo was like that totally ruined your brother it totally ruined him and I thought encore was going to do good without him you know he had Flo they got as a third member they I thought they was out there no good but evidently they didn't do too well and um so yeah so she putting the blame on Simone about how much of a shit person you are because of how you did your brother. You ain't even talked to him in over a year. Nobody's heard from Kendall except for Flo. And they ain't even together. Okay. So like I said, they, they get into it in line and everything and, and then it becomes a division of who was right and who was wrong and the dancers pick sides and majority of them pick Flo. Majority of pick Flo and walked off with Flo. Um, after she gave Simone that read. So later on, Simone is talking to JT about it. And well, JT was like, well, shit, you, you right. She was right. You did play us. You did abandon your brother. You've always been thinking about you and always been, you know, it's always been about what Simone wants. And without any type of, you know, thought process into how it's affecting other people. So, you know, she was kind of like insulted somewhat <laughs> with what JT had to say. Um, but she wanted JT to help uh, to put them to get back together and maybe we could put the group back together maybe we could do this, maybe me and you could start off and start performing together again like we used to you know, JT's like, that's not my life no more I don't do that so she pulled out the old song that they was working on it's like, you know, we, we got the song where we can do this um, and he's like I, I, I told you, I'm not about that life no more you know, I done let that go so next thing we see with JT, we know that JT is running errands for Gerald at this point, but now he got to do more serious work. He, he moving money. It, it, you know, first he was you know, being a henchman for him. Now he moving money for Gerald. And, you know, he always got to question whether or not this is the right move for him, but then he keep thinking back on all the good that Gerald has done for him. You know, first the situation when, when Gerald first gave him the job, now Gerald wouldn't buy him brand new Gucci suits and shit like that, tailor-made Italian suits, making them look all good, making him look like he played a part, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, and he giving him life lessons at the same time, you know, about being a black man and, and, then, and then on top of being a black man, 
in, in, in this time and day running a business such as this and you know having people who you can trust who you can work with and things like that so basically he gonna do anything that Gerald wants him to do because he feel obligated to he feel like he owed Gerald something and um so he takes the money that it, he had to go drop it off at a bank or something they, they were gonna ride somewhere and he took Gerald's car and uh, went to this bank, you know, uh, to go make this deposit for Gerald's Lord summer cash. And couldn't find out that the police is still following JT. Either he following JT or he following Gerald's car. But we figure he following JT because we already seen him following JT. Every time JT goes somewhere, you see that cop, same cop that was in the hospital bed or uh, the hospital room when he woke up after being stabbed up by Nate. They told him he better still watch his back. Get that cop. It's a whole year, two years later, and this one cop is still trying to build a case against JT. He wasn't even the leader of the Crips. You know, he was just a follower. But he still got his eye on JT. And that's bad for Gerald's business. That's real bad for Gerald's business. Okay, I gotta speed up here because it's a merging lane and this truck don't look like he know how to merge. Um, so yeah. So but but the thing was Gerald was smart enough to follow JT too. So now Gerald see who the heck it is that's following JT. They got pictures of him. They got his plates and everything too. They're going to learn real quick that that person that's following JT is a cop. Um, I think what they did learn, because the guy was like, we can't handle him like we do everybody else. You know, he wanted them special people. You know, you got to handle special people in a special way. So Gerald going to figure that shit out. Now, um, Back at the studio, um, Don getting the glass piano delivered. I was like, I, I was confused for a second there. And then I realized, motherfucker, Elton John. He got Elton John. That's Elton John shit right there. And who shows up? George. George Johnson. You know what I'm saying? He like, I, I just got a question. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. I see you got this old nice fancy piano thrown up in here. So you really got Elton John. And he was like, how, how you know? I'm supposed to be your business partner, but you ain't telling me nothing. I'm not in on none of the business. I don't understand if you don't understand what a partner's supposed to be. And so they had a little disagreement about the fact that he didn't inform him about uh, Elton John and the fact that he canceled the shy lights. That's what we was on the phone with in the beginning, canceling out. He removed the shy lights to put Elton John on the on the uh, show. I mean, of course. The Shy Lights is very popular with black people, but Elton John was popular with everybody at that particular time. But the problem that, that George has with this, when we started out back in Chicago, the Shy Lights are the ones who helped us. They were our brothers. And then you just dogged them out for a white dude, just for a buck, you know. Um, and they pissed off about that. They pissed off. Don did a lot of people wrong. Don Cornelius, he did a lot of people wrong in the game. If you ever watch interviews about people talking about their interaction with Don Cornelius, he was an asshole. The feeling that I get about him, that's the same feeling that the people that worked with him had. It's, it's not too many people that says that Don just... Don was the reason. The Soul Train show itself gave them exposure and gave them some opportunities. But Don Cornelius as a person was not somebody that they liked to fuck with. You know what I'm saying? And the way that he treated the shot lights, George wasn't too happy about that shit. How you gonna play our people? You know what I'm saying? How you gonna be down for Brown and then move them around when the white boy come in town? Y'all see how I did that? You know, I'm a poet and you don't know it. I'm a poet and you don't know it. So, yeah. George wasn't too happy, but it's Elton fucking John. So, next we get to see Elton up on stage. The Benny and the Jets. I don't know why I like that little song. Benny and Jets was the shit. That was Benny and the Jets. The Benny and the Jets was the song. It was. I don't know too many more songs of Elton John that I could recall off the top of my head. Somebody had to play and I'm be like, oh yeah, I know that. But as of today's day, I couldn't think of a lot of songs that Elton John sang. And I want to say that the young guy that they had playing Elton John in this is the same guy that they had playing in the Elton John movie that just came out. What was that called? Rocket Man. 
Y'all let me know if that's true. I tried to watch Rocky Man and I couldn't. I'm not really a fan of musical style movies, and it was a musical style movie. So I couldn't really watch it the way that I, I couldn't really get into it. Um, but yeah, I think that's, he looked like the same guy, you know. Uh, you know, he did his little interview and talked about, you know, his connection with Soul Train and how the, the, the band I always watch him. They make sure that everybody getting down with the Soul Train. You know, all the advertisement, all the free advertisement that people wanted to hear. And then he got the people to you know, interview him. They showed the, the kids interviewing. Um, Elton John found out where he got his glasses from. You know, he used to wear the most outrageous ensembles, you know, uh, to try to make his image stand out more than anybody else. He wanted to be seen. And he, he, he hell, shit, he basically was sliding in the family stone with that shit, too. He was out, he wore the baddest outfits and some, you know, some, some very outstanding costumes, you know, slide in. And her John is too. So, uh, overall, that shit went well. So, later on in the, in the evening, we see Sly out there crawling around on the ground, high as a motherfucker. And Donna's like, what the hell is going on with him now? You know, he, at first I thought he was looking for his, his yama. <laughs> He's like, no, he's looking for his card. And he sounded crazy as hell. Like, what the fuck? Don just he ain't making no sense. He talking gibberish. Baby, he was looking for his card that is required for him to get into the casino. What the fuck casino? Your casino that you got in the back. Gerald told me I need this card to get in if I can't get in. You know, I'm on a roll, baby. You know, that's where the, the, the dope, the drugs, the money, the game, the fun, all that's happening out back. I need my god dog on card. Get down here on the ground and help me find it. So now Don is like, what the fuck? So he goes back up in there. I think they must have found the card or whatever. And he goes back up in there. And uh, Gerald is up in some chick face just laughing and flirting and talking with her, doing business as he do. And Don come in like, motherfucker. <laughs> Gerald looking like, well, you know now. You know now. All right, y'all. That is the end of American Soul. I know I left probably a lot of stuff out because, like I said, I'm trying to retain this from memory. This has been a recap on the run. Season 2, Episode 4, Lovely Day. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Y'all tell me if DC Young Fly did the damn thing is is Sly for the Family Stone, baby. He did the damn thing to me. I'm like, look, you better go. I did not know that boy was that skinty. Oh, my goodness, he was that skinty. Um, And am I correct? This is the one episode that he has... The most performers. He had three entertainers on one episode. Uh, I was surprised to see that. Um, and the whole deal with Gerald and the and the casino and Don finding out at the end and what's really gonna be the team with JT and his police officer is is Gerald gonna let him dig his heels in a little bit further before he handle this cop, or is he gonna blame JT for not being aware? Because he told JT to always be present in the moment, always pay attention to what's going on around you. Is he going to blame JT for not being totally aware that he's been being followed? And every, like I said, evidently for two fucking years. And that's a hindrance to Gerald's business right now. We ain't had Ruby again this episode. So, you know, we know some more stuff in to come out of her. I want to thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for being patient. Get ready for tonight's episode. Love, peace, and soul, baby.